So a few months back, I did a video introducing Iowa State's three safety defense. And at that point, it was kind of the start of the offseason and the kind of the COVID-19 break. And so I wanted to look at it from an X's and O's standpoint, gain a little bit more knowledge for myself. Wasn't familiar with that, that type of defense other than watching it on Saturdays. And at, at that point, I was really more interested in some of the, the stunts and the blitzes and some of the pressure packages that they use, how they roll to different coverages. And so that was my mindset at the time. Uh, but I had a great comment on that video asking about more run fits and alignment stuff to more uh, run traditional formations. And so that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at this Oklahoma against Iowa State game from last year. And I know Oklahoma isn't a true power run. They're, they're very much a spread, spread you out, um, get, get guys into space. But we are going to look at more of their – spread run formation so your 20 personnel your your 11 personnel your 21 personnel and even some 30 personnel when we talk about bringing guys into the box with motion so we're gonna look at about about 10 uh plays and kind of give you want to give you the positives and the negatives on what i see with the three safety defense when it comes to to run fits so let's let's get started All right, here's the first play this is first and goal from the eight yard um it's 11 personnel so you have yo twin strong with the twins into the boundary we get an X jet motion from up top, and essentially this is power read. Um, and he gets a pull read because obviously the DN takes the jet motion. It's a big enough crease where he gets in. This is not obviously not a good play for for the uh, defense, but kind of brings into some things that I that I want to talk about with run fits that I see from the three safety defense. First thing to notice too is that Iowa State came out and they did this early on, and I think because they wanted to kind of tighten up the edges, keep that mobile quarterback inside the pocket, don't let him break. Um, but they came out in more of the traditional 50 looks, so their fives on both sides instead of their four eyes. And then I know here is we're condensed down a little bit by the field position, but the, the backers are tight. You see a little bit of that later on too, and I think that can screw up some scrape, some angles to to in pursuit. Um, but the you get into this argument of do we spill or do we box? And I'm I'm from the philosophy of we want to spill everything. And the reason why is because for us, we put our best kids at safety and outside backer. And so with, with speed on the outside, I want to push everything to the edges and let those guys chase it down. And I would think you want to do the same thing here with um, this defense because your, your stud guys is probably your joker safety um, and then your down safety because those are the guys that are probably going to fit more often than not. And so you can see here this front side DN, field side DN takes the jet motion and obviously gives him the pull. Instead, if he were to play the heel line and blow this up either by A, you know, spilling the, the, the puller or going straight to the mesh, not so much upfield, but more at the mesh and taking that free shot on the quarterback, um, you would see a give here. And then I like the numbers if you look at it here. It, let's say he's down inside, so he's out of the picture, but we've got gapped up, gapped up, gapped up, plus one. So we're good. Let's give it to the guy, let's get him to the outside, and then let's chase the hip and, and, and pursue from there. What I don't like is this inside. I feel like if you if you box this and send it inside, um, the numbers are not for us right here, especially with the over-pursuit of the linebackers. You can see this, Mike. His job to me is – if he's out, I'm in. So I, I need to fill here instead of out here because essentially now we've got two guys outside in, in the same gap. And really I want one down and one and one out. And so if if we get a, a dive, now we gap exchange and we're out. Um, but if he, that DN stays out, then I've got to be inside and pick up that extra gap. But that doesn't happen here and now. They've got angles, and you can see this backside wheel kind of over-pursues it just enough, and now um, that tackle doesn't have to seal him off this way. He can just let him cross face and now turn and seal him the other way. They do a good job of working up to safeties and, and second-level blocks from the O-lineman. It gives just enough crease for him to get by. So one of the negative things that I, I'd see from this defense, I feel like you've got to – if you're going to play this tight defense, you need to, to really play the tight, you know, squeeze up the inside gaps – Spill everything, bounce to the side, and let's go pursue it down with your speed. One more time here, and gets upfield. There's your crease. It's just enough for a mobile quarterback to get through. Here's the second play. This is, uh, I think, the next series, uh, middle middle of the field. Um, I believe it's uh, first down, first and 10. Um, and it's a two-back set, so gun split with the twins into the boundary. 
Um, you can see the Sam has to come out. I'm not sure why they like that outside leverage there. I would much rather play him inside leverage and allow that safety to come over the top a little bit there. Uh, one of the things that interests me is is the alignment to this two bag set. I'm not fond of just because, especially when it's into the you know fibbed or, or formation into the boundary, I feel like you're a little bit weak pre alignment right here. So uh, most of these are going to look up and see five man box. But we know obviously we can add quickly and get that number up. But with this weak edge, they're obviously going to attack it. So you're going to see kind of a, a basically a dart lead play right here. Since it turns into ISO, and so we've got to have two guys at the point of attack to take on that ISO here and here and obviously the, the the bigger issue is you've got two guys in a gap with this field side dn peeking in the b gap now the linebacker's committed and now we've got to be able to replace it here um the joker safety to me i'd rather have him at about eight yards um, playing it like kind of a quarter safety where he's flat footed and then that way he can get to the point of attack a little bit easier. I would rather him get there first than here because now if he's forced to come inside, now he's got to fill the opposite gap and fix the fit. And I just feel like that's a longer pursuit. Whereas if he's there sooner, even if you get two guys in a gap, now he can go ahead. Let's say he's here. He can go ahead and fill that. Ball's got to bounce now. And now the pursuit angle is a little bit better from, from that secondary safety. So... Um, would like to see the alignment. If you are going to give up this edge, that, that that joker safety be a little bit more at eight yards, give or take, and can can get to that edge a little bit faster than he can because otherwise you're just pursue, you know making his pursuit angle even longer if he's getting there first. So just just like I said, even if you run some type of um, you know blitz pressure where you're taking that will out of the fit right away, and even if you play him inside like that, now you still got to get outside. And then when you know they're adding guys at the point of attack, it's just an ISO. So you got to get two guys to the ISO. Let's look at it one more time and then we'll look at it from the butt shot. Two guys in the same gap, late to the ISO. And then obviously he's going to get um, easy yards off of that. So to me, that, that should have been, you know, if, if nothing else, it should have been one, two yards gained instead of, um, an easy first down. We got it from the butt shot. So they're still in their traditional 50 look outside. And sometimes they play these guys in what's called heavy technique. So if they do get a base, they can go ahead and come under. If they get past set, they can stay outside. Um, if it's a down block, they can go ahead and um, down block. They can go ahead and squeeze it and we can exchange it. Um, but I just feel like, again, the, the backers are really, really tight right here. I don't know if that was a game time decision, but so tight that once you commit to a gap, you're pretty much um, stuck in it. You can't play a secondary gap, which is, you know, kind of crucial for a three down team is to be able to play primary to secondary gap. Again, just enough of a crease to get that extra yardage. This next play is a first and 10 middle of the field. Uh, again, a Yo Twins formation, but now the back is not to the strength, it's to the passing strength into the boundary. Uh, we're going to get an outside zone here, but watch this down safety here do a great job of filling quick. Plays it flat footed. There's no release. It's just downhill now. It definitely helps because with this, with this Yo, to me, I, I don't quite understand why we're again, we're soft on this edge. Um, unless they're trying to give the appearance of that and then fit it quick because I'd rather have my guy here at about eight yards and can get to this now because if we add to this side, I need to be able to gap up, gap up, gap up. And now I need a guy inside of here and outside of here. So just kind of something that confuses me and you can tell I'm, I'm a D-line linebacker guy. I'm looking at gaps um, all the time. And so that's just something not, that I would be wary of running this three safety defense is, is knowing where we're deficient in being able to fill gaps if they add guys to the point of attack. But this is a great example of that can be fixed when you have a great safety that's triggering fast. They're still in their 50 look, staying outside shade. Again, the backers are tight. Kind of limits them to, and me, it just limits them to the A and the B gap as far as I'm concerned. If they're not able to scrape very you know, over the top very well, especially if you've got guys that can arc release and, and seal them out. So they're pretty much just there, get the ball, bounce it to the outside, let these guys spill, you know, or sorry, let these guys get on the hip um, and get to the ball quick. This next play is going to look very familiar just because, uh, again, it's inside the red zone. 
Um, you got Yo Twin Strong um, into the boundary here. Again, jet motion. It's a power. It's the same exact play. Um, the only difference is Iowa State handles this a little bit better, mainly because I think instead of arcing this guy, they're going to go ahead and, and, and down him, and that allows this, this natural inside, outside, gives it a better look. They kind of spill it. Great play from this backside uh, D end and, um, and nose. And really, this is a give read, and he decides to keep it, probably just because he had success with it last time. But you can see – um, they do a good job of getting underneath things, making things want to want to be able to bounce, and because it, you know, there's no room in there, there's no crease, um, and even if they give it, we're okay, just because you've got now. I like where this Joker safety is now. Again, he's in the middle of the field. He can get down here a lot quicker, especially as they motion over. We're good still on this side. Now you can see that underneath. Over the top, outside, plus one. So it's one on one with the ball carrier. Still good on the on the play side. Let's look at it from the butt shot. Here comes the motion. Nose does a great job splitting the double team. Mike Will does a good job scraping. Mike does it uh, scrapes a little too hard. I'd rather him kind of fit off this nose. If if you know he's here, I know that I'm going to fit probably in this gap right here or at least work to it until I see that it's cloudy. And then now I can work over the top. But he's chasing down something that's not really there. Stay behind the ball, in my opinion. Stay behind the ball. We're good on the front side. Stay behind the ball and just let it come to you. Here's our gap right there, which is the gap he's trying to, to, to take. Um, so, again, that backside can fit off the nose and get inside right here. We're still good on this gap right here because back. But great job from the nose, filling, splitting that double team and, and playing, that, uh, playing that power read. Here we have another first down play. Um, inside of, obviously, kind of backed up a little bit, but they're, again, running a gun split with now the twins to the field. I like this alignment a little bit better, except for I want to see him again more about eight yards and be able to get to this side because they're going to run like an RPO um, where they're looking for the fox on this side. It holds him up thinking he's got to come down and get anything cut back. doesn't allow him to get to the play side and fill gaps right away. Good design play right here. Um, just a quarterback power, adding extra guys to the point of attack. And you'll see on the butt shot that Mike does a great job of gap exchanging and trying to get underneath the, the power. Almost gets two for one on the pullers. See, so almost catches the guard, spills the guard, and almost gets the, the, the second blocker as well, which would you know even up the numbers, would allow that joker safety to fill a little bit sooner because he's got to come out and take the corner. Good play by the by the joker safety, but you know, enough to give them seven yards. So here again, we'll look at this. He decides to come inside. Mike exchanges, gets underneath, almost gets two for one right there, almost gets the the, uh, the ball carrier, but then the joker safety comes in. Again, I, I want to see him more right here and not so much, you know, thinking about having to come down for inside out on, on the twin side. I'd much rather him thinking I better be able to feel quick on the weak side. Or if they're going to play that kind of trap two covers, that corner needs to come on now and get kind of underneath this and, and spill it and let, let the guy still pursue it a little bit more. Here's a little bit more of a run heavy formation, um, 21 personnel. So you've got nub twins, gun split, um, twins to the field. They're going to play the regular still not quite understanding why these backers are playing so close. This makes it hard for them to gap exchange. Um, but, because it's a nub, you, you probably got to bring down a safety here. I'd rather this be a safety than a corner. And so uh, inside leverage from two with the Sam. And they do a good job of they're getting numbers. It's a great play call from Oklahoma. Looks like split zone. And then you have the quarterback pulling, and now he's got extra blockers. I like how that pull, once he knows he doesn't have the ball, step in. And now turn into a blocker. It's just a great play design. I like that a lot. Um, good job here from the DN getting down the line, spilling the the, the puller, which is essentially um, the, the split zone, the guy that's coming back to, to slice him, gets underneath it. The joker 
safety does a good job getting over the top and then the sam does a really good job of not getting sealed staying inside so now it turns into again another iso and so we've got to have one guy in and one guy out great job of staying in and, and spilling that i don't mind the spill there if there's something between you and the ball go ahead and spill it and then let everybody else get to the ball and just a good play um i believe that dn that gets back up let's see gets back up off his feet comes back pursuit just good effort right there and trying to take away some of the numbers so just being gap sound you still play good defense even in this this three safety look in some run heavy formations. And two yards basically, which is uh, really good. Let's look at it from the butt shot. Explod zone. Packers fill. Gets underneath. Spill that. Good pursuit by the bound. Yeah, that's just good defense, good effort right there. Getting guys to the point. Here's an 11 personnel, another nub set again, except for now we got slot trips to this side instead of gun split. Um, and I talked a lot about this in, in the last video I covered. Um, Iowa State uses a lot of long sticking, a lot of, um, you know, kind of cross blitzes and what I would call kind of an X where you have a guy come across here and then now the linebacker crossing him. Um, and when you do that into zones, guys kind of make new anchor points where they're not really expected. So you can see this tackle. Uh, on a true zone, he's probably thinking he's going to wash this linebacker who's filling. And now all of a sudden his eyes aren't really looking at this center. So he comes in the weak B gap. He's, he's open. He can pursue the ball right away and gets a good pressure on the quarterback and good pursuit from everybody else. It's good overall team uh, defense right here. But I like that they're able to kind of take away some of the number disadvantages just by stun, um, you know stunning and blitzing. It's a good play overall. Let's look at it from uh, the butt shot, and you'll see the long stick from the nose right here and from the D-end. It's a good pursuit from everyone. Here we see a long third and extra long. I think it's third and 19 right here. Uh, again, uh, you know, gun split with twins into the boundary. You're going to see a, uh, a dog from, from the sand plus a lightning blitz late from the safety. Um, they're kind of playing almost like a – almost like a two man with these, you know, safeties. But now because you overcommit, now you're pulling him out and you're losing uh, numbers to the edge, especially when you're backing him out and not necessarily getting him in the fits right away. And it kind of gets you in trouble if you have a run to that, to that side, especially a gap scheme where they're adding those extra gaps. So you can see here that now the running back's just going to follow. It's basically ISO in the mic with the guard, and now he's off to the races and almost gets enough for a first down. But, uh, again, I know they're playing soft um, just to get off the field here, but that can be an issue if you're, you know, depending on when you're sending stuff, it's risky just because especially if you're going to send it to the weak side um, and you're using that what would be the joker safety now in your coverage, you don't have a guy to add to that other side. Um, the corner does a good job, really, kind of realizing that it's run, sees it, kind of joins in but just takes him a little while to get there see it from the butt shot the biggest thing i would say is just kind of kind of a little bit passive from that linebacker uh, i think he's thinking that's gonna ball is gonna bounce outside um which instead he should just know hey i'm gonna fill go ahead and fill that let's blow it up now if you wait on it you're gonna get kicked out um, and you're not going to make a play. So just being aggressive there would have probably helped this play. All right, and this last play here, again, is a nub set with uh, pistol looks. You got your slot trips up top to the field. Um, and, again, they're playing that safety down against the nub, um, and that kind of frees the corner out of play back a little bit. Here's your joker safety. I like uh, I like he's a little bit tighter. He's going to do a great job of filling this backside. One thing that, I, that I've noticed, and this is kind of more coming from that Dave Aranda um, philosophy on how you play your linebackers, and that is when you're playing a two-gap system, you want them not to pursue um, right away um, and give up some cutback stuff because you're playing secondary gaps. You want them really to stack depending on the flow, stack, stack, hold, and now we can either play front side or if we, if we can play our secondary by just falling back into that secondary gap. So here's an example of that. The linebacker does make up for it. 
Um, you're going to get a counter trade from Oklahoma here. So linebacker or running back sees that there's there's the backside. So again, if we over pursue, we're going to make his make his decision easy. We want to make his decision hard and push him to the gap we want him in. Where really we want to we want him to to go outside because now we've spilled spilled. Here's our plus one. We'll get him right here. Instead, we're giving up that cutback lane. And, and even though he makes a good play here, we're now we're putting it on this safety to fill um, that, that back gap. So if they were to, on the snap, stack, stack hold right there, and then fall back into their secondary gap. Instead of getting too far over the top, now you're in front of the ball. This is a linebacker coach and me talking here. Now you're in front of the ball and you're giving up the cutback. So you're you're off the hip, um, you're out in front, and then you're giving up that cutback. Now, granted, this D1 player is able to 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 make up for that. But if you're really if you're coaching high school and guys are kind of outmatched, you've got to really rely on your technique more so than just physical um, ability. So stack, hold, push that that running back in the gap you want, and then fall back and take him. But good job of that that uh, Jack uh, Joker safety coming down and filling that lane. Here's it is from the the butt shot. So there's the crease. Now it comes the the Joker safety. So again, you can see if he were to stack over the nose here, go he stacks here, holds it, and now either pushes him, bubbles him out to the plus one, or lets him come back into the gap where we're standing right there. But good job of the safety coming down and fixing the fit. Um, only gives up a few yards. So um, hope this was informative. Again, I wanted to look at a few more uh, kind of run, spread run formations and how the fits work and some of the things I saw the issues were with. Maybe, maybe how I would coach it um, if I were to implement a three safety defense into high school. Um, so welcome all the comments. If you have any suggestions on what you want to see next, um, shoot it down in the comments and we'll get another video to you as soon as we can.